the battery itself is a very novel construct in the sense that we're using very simple compounds, the water-based electrolyte and a simple metal that goes along with it. That's the anode. But what makes it work is the speed at which we pass the fluid over the, over the anode. It's a combination of the speed of the fluid over the anode with a very strong oxidant that's freely moving in the electrolyte. The electrolyte really is almost a catholite. The, the oxidant sits right in the electrolyte and even though the metal is oxidizing, the oxidant is being reduced on the cathode side, which is actually really remarkable because what most people would expect to happen in this case would be that as the anode oxidizes through the oxidant, normally would, would reduce right at the anode and there would be no electricity generated. But because of the size of this molecule, it actually reduces on the cathode side and because it does, the electrons that are being from the, coming from the oxidation pass over to the cathode and that's where we get our current. You have no membranes in the system at all and you have just one electrolyte not two electrolytes we can get an energy density up to about 1300 watt hours per kilogram for a nine node system that we have and it has power that scales with n squared or close to n squared as opposed to n with a normal battery if you put two batteries in series the power would be doubled ours would be squared so our battery generates both electricity and hydrogen inside of these tanks right here uh, these tanks have a much safer pressure at 30 PSI instead of the 10,000 PSI inside of other hydrogen vehicles. That then goes into the condenser, followed by the molecular sieve, which takes pretty much all the moisture out between those two systems. That then goes into the fuel cell right here, gets converted into electricity via these converters to 48 volts, and then it gets sent straight to the motor. Uh, our battery also produces electricity, which also gets converted to 48 volts and again, straight to the motor. This has been a very exciting time for us because all the advances in the chemistry are now getting implemented in, in a variety of vehicles. So we're gonna hit 3,000, 6,000 miles uh, for our, our next generation electric car. And we're able to do it because we've been prototyping this thing up from the scooter level up to off-road vehicle here. And then next step is, is full automotive and based on the technology advances that we've developed here uh, and some of the chemistry advances that just keep coming we're get, we've gotten to the point where our next generation electric vehicle is going to be lighter and more efficient than than current vehicles